All right, now joining us on Tennis Channel Inside In. This is the second time he's been on the show. We spoke last year, so he's an official reoccurring guest, uh, one of the most prominent voices in broadcasting in tennis. Ten-year pro, uh, was the assistant coach for Team World at the Labor Cup, and is the president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, which has some new and exciting things to talk about. Patrick Mackerel, welcome back to the show. I, I donned a collared shirt. We got a new studio. This is a big deal, so welcome back tell to the you, show. You're looking sharp right there. You know, I'm, I'm just hoping to get the invite someday to come to the Tennis Channel Studios out there in beautiful Santa Monica. But, you know, I'm still waiting. I, I, might, I got my phone here. Right. I'm ready for the call, Mitch, anytime. By the way, yeah. just one quick um, correction for you, okay? Uh-huh. I wasn't the assistant coach for the Labor Cup. I was the yep. vice captain, okay? Vice That's captain. the big difference. Vice okay. captain. Johnny Mack, of course, was the captain, and I was the vice. Because I said this to someone <laughs> recently. The reason I, I brought it yeah. up was I was doing another show a couple days uh-huh. ago, and someone said, oh, I like that vice captain. That sounds really <laughs> official. So I'm just throwing okay. it at you for whomever the next vice captain is. Of course, right. the new captain will be Mr. Andre Agassi for Team World, but he hasn't selected his vice captain yet. Well, no, I appreciate that. We're big nomenclature guys here, so that's going to be good going forward. And I, I had notes on that. I guess we can start there, the Labor Cup. You had a seven-year run, you and your brother, Team World. Unfortunately, weren't able to complete the three-peat this year, but just a phenomenal run. And I think it's great, Patrick, that you were able to kind of start new tradition. Tennis is very, very old-fashioned in a lot of ways, most of it good, but it's hard to kind of start new traditions and new legacies. And I think that, when we look back at it, you know, this Labor Cup thing's going. You left it in good hands, obviously. What's your thoughts looking back at this seven-year run that you, your brother, and these amazing athletes had? I mean, Mitch, it's just, it's a tremendous event. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's uh, incredible to get, you know, 12 of the best players in the world together on one court, you know, for a mm-hmm. rel- relatively short period of time for those, just those three days of play. And of course, you have a couple of days building up to it. Um, amazing experience. I mean, I give, I give Roger Federer, you know, Tony Godsick, his longtime manager, and the gentleman who, ru- who runs it for teammates, Steve Zachs, who's really the guy organizing the entire event with an amazing team, by the way. Mm-hmm. They put on a fantastic event. I mean, every year mm-hmm. it seemed to get better. You know, a practice court set up for the fans to, to view the players, all sorts of activities, you know, great hospitality for people paying the big bucks. So I was proud to be a part of it. As you said, there's so many different entities in tennis. We all know that. It's hard to find something new that can really work and work well. So I just hope that the Labor Cup, you know, continues for many years. I know their dream is for it to be sort of the Ryder Cup of tennis. Um, We'll see if that ends up happening. You've got the Davis Cup, of course, the Billie Jean King Cup for the women, the ATP Cup, you know, down in in, in Australia. So everybody, as always, Mitch, looking for a piece of the pie, the proverbial (laughs) big pie. And uh, we'll see how it shakes out over the course of the next decade or so but great event great for tennis the players love it they play hard but it's you know a little bit more camaraderie because of the team aspect of it um but the competition is is as fierce as ever yeah berlin seemed like a phenomenal environment they seem to really buy in a proud history in germany and yeah the players are the side of it that i think is really cool and the really most jaw-dropping side patrick is that they bought in they're in it to win it these are players that you cover and broadcast on the tour level but I mean, being there up close in person, you probably learned a little bit about how they how they operate, how they perform, and what they how they take care of their business when there's stakes on the line. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see you know up close, especially when I first started, and you had you know a couple of the big three there. You had you know Andy Murray there as well. Excuse my dog, by the way. All right. My watchdog. He's my little Yorkie. <laughs> Pepper, be quiet over there. Um, that doesn't work, by the way. Um, okay. Here's Pepper. See. Pepper yeah, McEnroe, Pepper. my first and only son, Mitch. Okay. Um, anyway, you know, <laughs> what was amazing to me initially when I started, you know, to be around Federer and, and Nadal when he played and, you know, Novak played, I think it was once or, or twice he played, mm-hmm. was to see how meticulous these guys are about their, even when they go out and hit for an hour. And it's, you know, it's not like super intense, the practice week, because there's so many other things going on. It's right after the U.S. Open. But the the guys preparing to practice it takes more time than the actual practice and then when they're done with practice all the mobility stuff they do all the preparation they do all the things they do to make sure that they don't get hurt basically and they keep themselves you know limber and loose 
And I saw our guys, you know, like Francis Tiafo is a great example. When he started, he was quite young. He was sort of like, you know, happy-go-lucky. That's what part of the thing we love about Francis. But now you see him doing the same kind of things that those mm -hmm. guys do because um, you got to get with the program. You know, if you want to mm -hmm. be one of those players, you know, you know who was amazing at this later in his career was John Isner. You know, he took care of himself. People don't realize this because of his size and et cetera. But he was one of those guys that really took care of his body well. And that, that was what enabled him to play, you know, with a huge serve and not great mobility into his, his mid-30s. So that's the thing that stood out to me the most was how professional these guys are, the right. attention to detail of everything they do. And obviously, you know, watching them play, you know, up close and personal is, is amazing. It's just I marvel every, you know, over the course of every new generation of players, like watching Alcaraz this year was like, man, these guys are taking it to another level. You know, what, what these yeah. guys do, you, you're always wondering, like, how can the game get better? How can, you know, players improve? And then you watch this guy taking the ball pretty much on the dead run, like early and cutting the angle off and hitting like a shot like Mach 10. Like it's normal. Like that's yeah. a normal play. And I'm like, this guy's just making this, you know, you know, Taylor Fritz, who just got to the U.S. Open final, playing the best tennis of his career. For sure. It's 6 2 4 2, and it's not that close. I mean, credit <laughs> to Fritz. I actually, you know, almost won stole that second set. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that to me was, is just amazing to watch up close and personal. They're taking the very best that we've seen and they're building it. They're putting their own, you know, sprinkle on it and taking the level further. It's remarkable stuff, Patrick, as we get to a time in tennis where. I said yesterday in an interview that we've got a lot of different transitions going on, players saying goodbye, players stepping up. I wanted to ask you about Rafael Nadal because he announced the retirement decision. He will be retiring at the Davis Cup final in Spain next month. The legacy is unprecedented, unparalleled as a competitor in all of sports. But what was your reaction to something we all saw coming, Rafael Nadal saying goodbye to the sport that he dedicated his life to and made the all-time impact on? You know, knowing Rafa, you know, reasonably well, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, friends with him, but, you know, been around him a lot. He's probably going to have a nice little doggy like this, mm -hmm. you know, and his son, uh, Rafa. So he's going to be just fine. But you put it really well. I mean, not only is he arguably the greatest competitor we've ever seen in tennis, maybe in sports in general, you got to put him up there, but so humble. And such a great sportsman, um, such a great example. I mean, I can't tell you, Mitch, you know, I helped run our John McEnroe Tennis Academy here in New York with my brother. And all the kids over the years that I, since I've been there, you know, that show up with the Rafa headband, that show up with his racket. And, you know, I tell them, you're probably not going to be able to hit the forehand like Rafa, okay? But you can learn from his attitude, which was 110%. Every time he went out on the court, no excuses, be humble, you know, respect the game, which is why he never broke a racket, you know, that kind of thing. Respect the opponent, um, which I, you know, I, all those guys, those three guys, you know, the all-timers were, I think, were great at that. And I think they, they fed off of each other because they, they realized they were taking tennis to another level. So it's hard to imagine... Um, You'll see what well, we hope we do is someone like Nadal with with the whole package that he has. And the interesting thing, talking right. going back to the earlier question about how the game evolves, nobody's been able to do what he's done with just with the one shot, the forehand. You know, the mm -hmm. topspin on the forehand. You know, I think of Jack Sock, like he had that rotation on the ball, couldn't right. do it consistently. You know, didn't have the physicality. I mean, nobody's. Been, he's the one guy I think of that had <laughs> like the same RPMs on the forehand. For sure, yeah. And it's like. Nobody's been able to do that. Whereas, you know, you see the big servers, you see guys taking the ball early, you see them going up the line more. You know, players have adjusted to that. You know, not nobody doing it as well as Novak's it's, 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 uh, up to this point. But I don't, I haven't seen any player that can emulate at all, which is obviously part of the reason why Rafa dominated, you know, on play for so many years because that ball just yeah. was exploding off the court every time. He's a total unicorn in so many ways. It was funny looking back at his career. One of the first times I saw him and really paid attention, it was a match and a broadcast you called, was Montreal against Agassi in 2005. Right. That was right. the first look we saw at this kid on hard courts. And then it just yeah, pretty, went pretty from there. Pretty fast hard court, too. Yeah. Pretty fast. Yeah. And I, think I remember that match, and I remember, 
I think if it was the same summer, I think it was when he beat Agassi at Wimbledon, you know, on mm. grass. Yeah. You know, I remember thinking like Agassi's going to probably win this on grass. You know, he takes the ball early, hits it flat. Yeah. And like Agassi was like, I remember like looking at his face. He was like, oh, my God, like this. What is what is this? You know, this type yeah. of athleticism uh -huh. and this type of firepower on a tennis court. Um, you know, he raised the bar. And uh, but he raised the bar in a lot of ways, you know, mm -hmm. not just as a player, but as a person. And I, I, I always use the word sportsman because I think of him as so much more than just a tennis player. You know, he's one yeah. of the great all time athletes ever. He is. He really is. Uh, and just a closing note on Nadal. I know you're a general sports fan, too. Do you think kind of like I do that Nadal's 14 Roland Garros might be the most unbreakable record or at least in the discussion for most unbreakable record in all of sports? I mean, it's hard to imagine how that's going to be broken. You know, it's like, um, you know, the hitting streak in baseball sort of has, has, has lasted yeah. for quite a while, too. Um, it, it, it's hard to imagine that kind of dominance um, on that, you know, at that one tournament. I mean, you've got Novak, yeah. obviously, in Australia with 10. Um, you know, Roger at Wimbledon, you know, was with, I think it's eight, right? But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's a great point. I'm not sure that there's going to be it's it's ever going to happen in individual sport. But that being said, we didn't think it would happen that Sampras's record would get broken, and then three guys just blew past him Insane. within the course of the last decade. Tennis is in good hands. And uh, before we move it along to uh, some of the other current happenings, especially in your life with the Hall of Fame, I did want to get your thoughts on Novak Djokovic going into. What I've been calling the next phase of his career, maybe the final phase, but we'll see with him and how he looks where he's still making the Shanghai Masters final. But Patrick, he has the ultimate trophy case completion moment. The ultimate mic drop wins the gold medal. And as for the first time, really said, I'm prioritizing things differently. I'm going to be focusing on team events and majors from here on out. But he makes the Shanghai final. He looks like he's enjoying the moment. He's 37 years old, still near the top, but maybe not at the very apex of his game anymore. How do you assess? Novak where he is and where he goes forward at this phase you know I think this will be his last year Mitch I think mm -hmm. um I think he sees the writing on the wall and mm -hmm. the writing is that you're it's going to be very tough to win more majors uh it's certainly as you said you know he just got to the final issue like if he if Australian mm -hmm. Open starts tomorrow he's the third favorite mm -hmm. and that's uh, pretty solid I mean that means you got you know Rafa would have come back Rafa wanted to play more so did Federer they wanted to, you know, try to be in the mix. Doesn't necessarily think like they had to win it, but they wanted to be in. And I think Novak will be the same. I think he's obviously still in the mix in a big way. Yeah. There's no doubt he can win an Australian. I mean, he obviously won the French. I mean, he won the Olympics on clay, which yeah. which um, was amazing. I think the two out of three helped them there. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yes, he can win um, one or two more. You know, Wimbledon obviously. You know, he's still a great – there's still not that many great grass court players. Right. But now you – you know, but now you got one that's that's pretty <laughs> darn good. And then center, I think, will be dangerous, you know, on every surface, as we've seen. He's won the two hard court mm -hmm. majors, but he can obviously play on anything. But those two guys have separated themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, Novak knows that in a in a big spot, he can, he can still be there. Um, and as long as he thinks he's got a shot, I believe he will play. I predicted at the beginning of this year that he wouldn't win a major this year. People thought I was crazy. But now he did win the Olympics. You know, right. and I think he, you know, once he got injured at the French, you know, Wimbledon was like a bonus that he was able to come right. back and make it to the final. That was amazing. It but was. I think, I think he was really thinking about trying to win that gold medal. And um, incredible that he did it. And uh, in the way he did it to beat Alcaraz in, in, in the final match. And, and then you've got the other guys like Zverev and, you know, Medvedev and, you know, Taylor Fritz making a move. And, you know, so who else is going to really threaten mm -hmm. the top two guys? Right now, you'd have to say Djokovic is there. But I even think those other guys are not as intimidated at the moment by Djokovic yeah. <laughs> as, they, as they have been. That's, that's normal after so many years. It is. You can't stay on top forever. He's put in the good fight, though, to keep it as long as possible with all the accolades, all the records, and all the achievements. Well, to put a bow on this, uh, since you are very, you know, adept at making predictions, not afraid to make predictions. The question I have for you is, who's the next male player to win their first major? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
you know, Zverev, I thought, was in the mix. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he was close last year, mm-hmm. but he sort of tailed off the second, you know, the second half of the year. Um, man, that's a great question. It's probably going to be one of these younger guys. You know, the, I mean, it, it, you know, they, it, Med, uh, well, Medvedev's got one, but you know, Zverev yeah. and, you know, Sitsipas, those guys, even, you know, Fritz is, is right that's there. Answer. He's actually maybe still improving a little bit. Those guys. Are probably not improving at the moment. You know, Rublev, yeah. uh-huh. they could all be in that, you know, mix, <laughs> never winning one, you know, like uh-huh. Nishikori and guys like that yeah. that we thought, you know, would have a shot in, in the big three year. Um, so maybe it's a, you know, Mahach or Mensik. Those guys have stepped mm. it up. Younger guys that, you know, very physical players, um, very athletic. You know, Rune yeah. has been disappointing in the last, you know, year, 18 months. Mm. Um, I'd like to say there's a young Ameri- you know, younger American. I've I've always been high on Corda, but mm-hmm. he just seems a little bit fragile physically. Like he just, you know, can't quite stay healthy enough to to mm-hmm. to be a factor in a yeah. big tournament. Um, and then you've got Fritz, who's been the most consistent American guy. Um, I think a lot of things have to break right for like like a Fritz to win a major. But he got the U.S. Open <laughs> final. He did. And that was yeah. a hell of an effort. A lot of discussion there. Uh, somebody, maybe Shelton. I did like the uh, Mensik shout out too. There's a lot of buzz. So yeah, we'll no, see. I, think, I, mean. I think Shelton's got the most upside. You know, mm-hmm. I, in, in, and even watching him at the Laver Cup, which I've been lucky to do the last two years, and even watching him play that match with Alcaraz, mm-hmm. you know, he lost in straight sets. But the first seven, eight games, that was like tennis, yeah. in a, like in a different stratosphere. So yeah. he he <laughs> couldn't he couldn't do yeah. it for two sets. And mm-hmm. obviously to be able to do it over five sets is another story, yeah. but he did it for, you know, eight games. So if mm-hmm. you can do it for eight games, you know, and match Alcaraz sort of in the athleticism department, the shot making department, then, you know, maybe he is the guy. And he's certainly got the moxie. He he's got the moxie, the belief, and he's not intimidated by those guys in a, in a way. He just, I think he realizes, you know, what he's going to have to do to get better, but you're right. He may be the American guy with the most upside. Now he's not as consistent at the moment mm-hmm. as Fritz and and you know Tommy Paul is a little bit more consistent. But we'll see how it shakes out. The good news is we've got four or five guys that should be meeting U.S. players mm-hmm. that should be in the mix for you know the next five seven years. We got more with Patrick Macro here on Tennis Channel Inside and the uh, broadcaster, also the president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, which I want to turn my attention to now. It's been uh, about a year and a half since you assumed that role. Do you feel like you're settling in? There's been a lot going on. You jumped right into the fire, but it seems like it's been a very successful time for you. And have you settled into that role? Yeah, I think I have. It's been um, it's been great. I just actually was up there a week ago. We had a little retreat with our senior staff. So, you know, there's a lot of good positive buzz. I think um, mm-hmm. myself and Dan Faber, who's sort of my boss and you know our CEO, yeah. and I'm the president. We knew each other in our days. Work. We both worked at the USTA in, in different areas, so we have a good rapport. And you know, the team there obviously does a great job um, over the years and kind of understanding the parameters of the Hall of Fame. So we're trying to you know bring a little more little more action. Uh, we obviously have an amazing opportunity with, in the Hall of Fame with you know the classes coming into the Hall of Fame over the course of the next few years, um, and it's a big opportunity for the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. I got my Hall of Fame sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah, you do. By the way, the Hall of Fame's got some great gear. I mean, there's, yeah. have you ever been up, have you ever been to the museum? I need, up there? I, I need to go also. And it, this is, this is an, they, they, yeah. it's all class. The Hall of Fame <laughs> it is. very classy. You yeah. know, the grass courts, the museum's awesome. We're doing a big renovation yeah. in the museum this year, yeah. which is, is uh, going to be an awesome upgrade mm-hmm. and the gift shop yeah. and all that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great destination. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. As I said, these are people that yeah. love tennis. Um, mm-hmm. It's a not-for-profit, so we're doing our part to try to raise the profile of the Hall of Famers, mm-hmm. you know, who mm-hmm. deserve to, to get mm-hmm. a little more attention. So we're trying to bring more of them in um, to participate in our activities, and I think that's yeah. appreciated by the Hall of Famers. Yeah. And um, I think we have a great opportunity the next five years to really kind of um, take it to another level. Yeah, we do want, want to point out, we will on this show, you know, free merch is accepted. So any oh, Hall yeah. of Fame stuff, Absolutely. you want to get it on the, yeah, we'll on the on show, that. sponsorships yeah. are there. I would also say, too, I mean, all the renovations are exciting. The entrance, the main gallery, which is called the Celebration Gallery and the Hall of Fame Gallery, it's exciting stuff. 
the 2024 ceremony was exciting and exceptional. Uh, but I was told to ask by somebody, Patrick, on the ground. Now, these aren't my words, but they were the yep. question to ask you. How does it feel to be the least talented member of your family, given the performance <laughs> that your wife and daughter did at the Oh, my know, God. Singing? But, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, they killed it. My wife killed yeah. it. She did a great uh, song, yeah. a parody song on um, from a song she did on Broadway yeah. about tennis. So it was very cool. <laughs> Uh, my daughter, my twin daughters got up and played a little guitar. Um, it was fun, you know, and she put a lot of work into it. So it was a, it was a, an honor for us to be able to be there as a family. Um, and I think it brought a little a little fun and she worked hard on it. So it was um, pretty, pretty cool. Event. So I thought you were going with my brother. I'm like, oh, give me a oh. break. Here. No, <laughs> no, that's a no. good job. You got me. It's pretty yeah. rare that you can get me in one of these. So well I done know. to you. We had to, we had to, and it, it was a great ceremony. It was also kind of a different era, right? The grass court tournament, the 250 yep. ATP event ends, but one door closes, another opens. There's going to be that combined 125 uh, the second week of Wimbledon next year, July 6th, or July 6th to 13th, and you're going to have women's tennis at the International Tennis Hall of Fame, which is an exciting endeavor. When the announcement was made, Patrick, you could see the excitement on some of the female champions that were there. So how important is it to now you have men's and women's tennis at these hollow grounds. I think it's going to be huge. And you know, when I made the announcement during the tournament, um, the last year of the ATP tournament, you know, the crowd erupted. Very happy. You know, it's a very local crowd. It's a great event. You know, I've been the last two years, obviously. It's got a great buzz. Um, I think we're going to have a maybe even a stronger field than we had in the 250. Because as you know, you know, a lot of these big challenger events happening in the second week of majors mm. or in masters events are getting, you know, a lot of the players that lose in that first week of those big tournaments looking for an extra week of, of, of play. So I think we're going to do really well. And it did give us the opportunity to, um, you know, move the the induction ceremony um, to later in the summer, right before the U.S. Open. So I think that's going to have, you know, it, it's going to be great that it can stand alone mm -hmm. as a couple of day event and also make, you know, the tennis <laughs> tournament. Um, stand alone as well during the second yeah. week of Wimby. We'll have some big screens. We'll show some. You'll probably be listening to me <laughs> over at ESPN at Wimbledon, you know, in the morning, and then we'll start our matches at Newport. So great town, great vibe. Yeah. Um, our grounds crew is going to have to work a little harder because they're going to have to use more courts, you know, if it's mm -hmm. going to be double the amount of matches. But I think it'll be a big success. I love the timing too. next year and going forward, the standalone induction. It's the weekend right up to the U.S. Open, August 21st, uh, it's 23rd. It's going to be a three-day celebration. And you highlighted it. We're going to have the Hall of Fame class for 2025, I think, announced at the end of this month. It's yes. coming up soon. Yep. Some big names there. And then yep. going forward, we're, we're about to hit a run of, uh, of the ages, I think it's safe to say, for Hall of Famers. Oh, you got that right. I mean, uh, you know, Roger, Serena, don't forget about Ash Barty, by the way, who's, um, you know, going to go in likely as well. And obviously, then you've got Murray, you've got now Rafa. Um, will Venus ever retire? You know, her place is pretty secure in the Hall of Fame as well. So um, it's exciting. And, uh, you know, we've had great meetings with, with the teams of those players, myself and Dan and others at the Hall of Fame. And you know, everybody's excited about it and excited about doing it, keeping the integrity of what the Hall of Fame, that moment is about, but also making it a little more current, you know, a little more fun, music, entertainment, um, bringing a little more of the personality maybe of the player that time. You know, this past year, I mean, this summer with um, uh, VJ Armitage and Leander and Richard Evans going in as well, you know, the Indian connection and the vibe was awesome and uh, great speeches and as you said we really we moved it to that other area at the on site it looked amazing looked great and i think that's going to continue to grow our friend the tennis channel did you know an amazing job putting it on tv so i think we can make it bigger and better every year and keep that you know wonderful tradition and history that is really what makes a hall of fame what it is it's so important to have appreciation for the players and legends that came before you. It's nice to see that this Hall of Fame, the ceremony, the tournament's taking off and that the current players are buying in. And yeah, then it dates us all because some of the players that we grew up or saw watching not too long ago are going to be inducted. Well, Patrick McEnroe, you've been very generous with your time. I appreciate you coming on Tennis Channel Inside In. We'll have to do this again. The invitation is always open to come to the studios in Santa Monica, California, but of course, keep up the good work broadcasting and also 
being the president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. I appreciate uh, what you guys do and, you know, supporting tennis as well as you do. And look at my guy yeah. down here. Look at him. <laughs> look at him. He's just yeah. chilling right there. Say, yeah, he, shout loves, out. he loves the Tennis Channel podcast. He's just chilling. He's yeah. totally calm. Pepper, good boy. Good job. Shout out to shout out to shout Pepper Macro as well. We did yep, a, we did a got. three we did a three person three uh, person animal podcast with Patrick Macro. Exactly. Thanks for coming on the show. And, and maybe I, maybe I'll pop in there on my way to Australia. Who knows? Who knows? Thank you again. All the best.